although there is a large number of bones in the vicinity of the wrist joint, two bones of the forearm and a series of carpal bones. The wrist joint is composed of three of these bones, the radius of the forearm, and then two carpal bones, the scaphoid and the lunate. So the movements of the wrist are caused by the movements between the scaphoid and the lunate of the carpus and the radius of the forearm. The ulna serves a supporting role, but it is not the point where the articulation occurs. The wrist joint is a synovial joint because it has a joint capsule. It is a diarthrosis because it is freely movable, and specifically it is a condyloid joint. And typical of condyloid joints, it allows for movement in two separate planes. For example, it allows for the flexion and extension of the wrist. This is one plane of movement. And not only can we extend our wrist to its position in anatomical position, we can also perform some hyperextension of the wrist beyond anatomical position. Condyloid joints not only allow flexion and extension, they also allow movement in a second plane and thus allow abduction, movement away from the midline of the body, and adduction, movement towards the midline of the body. So the wrist also allows the abduction and adduction of the hand. Now, once a joint allows for flexion and extension, abduction and adduction, it also then allows for circumduction. Circumduction is not a separate movement. Instead, it is a movement created by combining flexion, abduction, extension, and adduction. So by combining these uh, classes of movements, the wrist also allows for circumduction.